I thought it would be useful to work through using GitHub and Eclipse in the context of vSTAR development by looking at an actual issue that's been captured. So recently a choice course participant found that when he clicked on the time column in the observation list that a number format exception occurred. Now if you look at the details of the uh, error that I've captured in the issue, um, one of the things that uh, stands out is that there's a comma in the uh, the JD value associated with the error. And um, if you look at the exception trace that was captured in the log, uh, it turns out that the double as string comparator compare method is uh, involved. So I thought I'd reproduce this in vSTAR by setting the locale to something other than English, uh, anything that would essentially represent uh, uh, numbers as uh, having commas in them instead of um, instead of periods. So when I load a, a data set of some sort um, with that setting and click on the time column, uh, sure enough that error occurs. So looking at the code, it turns out that the um, the double as string comparator class in vSTAR just uses a, uh, a double dot parse double method a couple of times and uh, so clearly this is not handling things in a locale sensitive way. Um, so I, I think the error uh, here can be sorted out by using a, um, uh, a parse double method that we happen to have in uh, number parser uh, that ultimately calls down to Vila expressions and uh, that's how I think we'll solve the problem. So in order to um, to do this, if we go back to uh, GitHub and then just go to the um, uh, the code tab at the top left, what we want to do is to create a, a new branch. Now this, this error uh, is captured in um, issue number 11. Now I think we probably won't have a conversation about about um, how we'd like to name branches, but that's probably less important than just creating a branch at this point. You can see there's already a number of other branches that have been created here for some of the issues that um, Max has raised in recent times. And uh, so what we'll do here, just for the purpose of this one, is to create a, uh, an issue uh, branch called issue 11, and we'll just say number format. So notice that since the branch doesn't exist, GitHub just tells me um, or asks me whether I want to create that branch. So I'll just go and do that. So now we have this branch, and it's, it's currently active here. Of course, there's no different no difference between what's in master and what's in this branch at this point. Um, but um, what we need to do if we want to make use of it is to uh, check it out or switch to it in uh, in vSTAR um, sorry in Eclipse and um, so well, a couple of ways of doing that you can go to the, the, the project um, in um, the package explorer or you can go to the git repository view it doesn't really matter too much which so I'm just going to control click or right click in uh, on the vSTAR um, label there and I'm going to firstly get that that newly created branch I'm going to fetch it from the github repository uh, so what you do is go down to the remote menu here and and select fetch and then we just hit finish um, and it tells us that ooh, a new branch has been fetched uh, from the repository so we'll close that now and then what we want to do for the purpose of development is to switch to that branch. Uh, and so you can right click on that and on that new branch and click uh, check out. It will also require just the creation of a local branch with that same name. So we'll say yes there and um, click finish. So now we've also got a local branch with the same name up here and one 
in uh, the remote origin of the same name. <coughs> so there's a couple of um, commands, git commands that are essentially identical uh, with this. If I had said get git fetch instead from bash, that would have done the same thing as I just did by checking it out. Um, if since I've already done a checkout, I don't need to do this now because I did it in, with an Eclipse already. But the git checkout command is just the same as that one that I used from Eclipse. If I wanted to see what the actual branch was, the current currently active branch here, I could I could say git branch dash v, and it will confirm that that issue eleven number format branch is the um, the currently selected one. So we're good to go. We can actually now modify the code and we know that we're going to be committing to that new branch now. So what I'm going to do is just change this to use number parser and um, we have to just get that import. So I've just done that with uh, command shift O and then we'll do the same thing for this one here. And if we rebuild the code, and I'll, I could be running this from Eclipse, obviously, instead uh, of uh, the command line. Um, in fact, let's just do that because it's uh, it's easier. Especially now that Cliff has uh, sorted out the icons uh, related issue at load time. Thanks for that. So what we can do now is just load that same data set. doesn't really matter which one, and try clicking the, the time column. You can see that if we click the time column now, that number format exception doesn't occur. So that's good news, we fixed the bug. So now, obviously, we want to get it back into the, the GitHub repository, so what we need to do is to commit that. Again, if I was doing it from the command line, I would use git add to um, uh, add it or stage it for commit and then I'd use at git commit and then git push. Now we can do the same operations in Eclipse. Um, I, I personally just tend to use the, the command line a lot more in general across uh, most of my work but the integration within Eclipse is quite good as well so I'll, I'll use that. But just to show you that you can see now git status shows that the, uh, the double as a string comparator has been changed. I could ask how it's changed by git diff. There's a, a couple of uh, local changes there as well. Um, and you can see down the bottom there, that's the change that we just made in, in Eclipse. So let's just uh, let's just try um, going back to the, um, the Java perspective here and um, we can we can see that uh, the double a string comparator uh, source code is there, so I'm going to right click on that and I'm going to go team commit. Now, what we want to do is just to add at the beginning of that the issue number by saying hash 11 so that the commit will show up in the issue, uh, the commit message will show up in the issue. So I'll type as the comment here, changed non-locale um, parse double method for number parses. Okay. And then I'm going to commit and push. So this is the equivalent of now doing essentially an add commit and push to the repository. Okay, so then we finally get a, a, a response back that says that um, it's been uh, pushed to the repository and so we can close that now. If we go back to the command line, we can see that that uh, uh, the status shows that, that that's no longer outstanding uh, for addition and commit. So that's good. 
Okay, so if we go back to GitHub and refresh this page, we'll see that the comment that we just used in the commit has been added. And so this really allows us to uh, like close the loop between modifying something in, in Eclipse and uh, seeing the result in um, in GitHub. So I could open that and see what change was actually made. Likewise, if you go back to the, the GitHub page, you'll see that uh, now there's this message um, that tells us that we can create a pull request so that we can compare the change that's been made and decide whether to accept it and make some comment on it. So if we click on that, what we'll get is a, uh, a pull request. It just, it just literally puts the, the title of the issue in here. And what, what I can do here is to add reviewers. So I would normally ask one or both of you guys at this point to uh, have a look at that. And um, so now if I was to create this pull request, you would get a notification and if you looked further down the page, you would see the, the, the changes uh, that have been made. Obviously, in this case, it's just a single file, but uh, you'd be presented with all the information about what's been modified on this page. And you could come back up here, make some comments like, looks good, or, you know, what about something? Um, or you could just decide that you didn't need to leave any comments at all. I think the simplest thing would be if you're happy to just say it looks okay and then uh, in any case what I'm going to do is create this pull request and I will just uh, remove uh, you guys from this so you don't get a, uh, a message and I'm just going to create the pull request. It looks like we can actually merge this thing uh, without any problems. There's no conflicts uh, that are between this branch and the master, um, but um, you know, essentially, we're pretty much ready to go. So I, I would, I would see, I'd be notified of any changes, any uh, um, comments that you made in this uh, pull request, and uh, I could look at them, go through another round of modification of the code. The, the, the new commits would go up. You would get, be notified of that, and you could make more comments and so on, and we could go round and round. Normally, it's Probably pretty quick uh, based on our previous experience. If, if once we've decided on a solution, but uh, I think this is a, a good sort of approach and allows not just me but you guys to be able to create branches, uh, commit code to the branch, create a pull request, and we can we can just check that we're happy with it before we bring it back into the master. Uh, you'll notice that f while I was talking there, there was this check that was actually uh, um, not complete. What that was was uh, the um, continuous integration that I've, I've got set up on GitHub through Actions now, which runs the unit tests every time uh, there's been something committed. And um, so they've passed, that's good. It uh, means that uh, we have even more reason to continue. So at this point, you know, once, once uh, we're happy that things are good, we can just come in and uh, I guess at this point I'd be happy to, for it just be me to, to do the merging, but down the track we might you might become comfortable enough to want to be able to do that as well. Um, and then we just click click the, the merge button there. We're going to confirm it. And what will happen is that this will then um, merge the change back to master from the branch. Um, we... Uh, it, it's, it's, cl it's closed the, um, the pull request itself and we get the opportunity at this point to delete the branch. So I'm going to do that because we don't need it anymore. So what I'd be inclined to do now is to just go back to Eclipse and switch back to master. You can do that from the git repositories perspective or from um, in a number of other ways but this is probably the simplest. If you click on the master branch and click checkout, that will bring us back onto the master branch. If we type git branch v, we can see uh, that we are indeed on the master branch, and that's pretty much it. 
so we've gone through from uh, the master branch, creating a branch, fixing a bug on the on that branch, creating a pull request, merging back to master, and uh, and that's pretty much it. So I think we might want to talk about some more specific details in uh, other videos or Zoom or Slack chats, but hopefully this has at least provided a good overview of using GitHub and Eclipse um, for vStar development. Well, thanks guys.